Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's just uh, stand and look to the Lord this morning. Let's remember Sister Leona. She's uh, going through another battle with a uh, problem with her health. And uh, she asked for prayer. Is there other prayer requests? I know Brother Bob, your son as well, if you remembered. Oh, okay, far. For Martin? Yes, okay. And your sister-in-law as well. All right, let's all lift our voice to the Lord. Heavenly Father, as we come before thee this morning. Yes, Lord. Lord, it's with thankful hearts, Lord, that we can approach thee. And Lord, you've seen these requests be even before we ask them, Lord. But Lord, you said we're the two and threes that gather together. You're in our midst. And Lord, you're hearing these prayers this morning. I just pray, Lord, that you meet every need, every condition, Lord, that thy will would be done, Lord. Lord, also as well, we have come here to praise thee and worship thee this morning, that you'd have your way in that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray this morning. Amen and amen. You can be seated this morning and have Brother Mike to lead us in a song service. Uh, number 33 in the red book.
Seventy in the red book. I need some upstairs in that one too. <laughs> We'll start with the chorus. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name.
Number 251 in the red book. <laughs> what a fellowship, what a joy divine.
Anyone else have a song? In the red book, number 45. satisfied with a cottage below a little silver and a little gold but in that city where the ransomed will shine
better practice this at all. Let's try it in C. <coughs> In times like these, you need a Savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure. Be Your anchor. Home. 
Anything else? Turn this over to to Brother Benno. Everybody stand. Praise Lord. It's wonderful. It's wonderful to be uh, under the tutorship of the Lord, and uh, He has all wonderful things for us. So praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, as we come to this part of the service, I just pray, Lord, that you would uh, have your way, Lord, as we look into your word, Lord, that we may see the picture, Lord, for the hour that we live in, and Lord, we're ever so thankful, Lord, that you looked upon us, Lord, you've seen something in each and every one of us, Lord, that you could see that you could mold and bring to the place that you want us to see in Christ Jesus. Amen. Can we see it this morning? We're going to look at our spiritual growth this morning. First of all, we need to know what we have to grow into to begin with. If we don't know what we need to grow into, we can read a lot of scriptures, look at a lot of words in the, in, in the Bible. But except we see a picture that the Lord wants from us, then we're just reading words for words. But I believe here at the end time, Surely at this time frame that we live here now, the bride heading towards perfection should come into a certain knowledge and understanding what this perfection means. Now when we talk about perfection, we're talking about growth. Not everyone came in to the bride of Jesus Christ all at the same year and at the same time. But this morning we're going to look at in the terms of when he picks you up, when he puts you under tutorship, and then when he puts you to work. What do you mean, put us to work? Well, that's, putting to work doesn't mean you have to be in a ministry, but we are to be ambassadors for the Lord Jesus Christ in the hour that we live in. And uh, the scriptures, a lot of scriptures talks about here, about the end time, but I want to Look at certain aspect this morning, and if, as a place to start, I want to go to Romans chapter eight. I'll start at verse twenty-seven. And he that searches the heart knows what's in the mind of the spirit. He that searches the heart knows what's in the mind of the spirit. Who searches the heart? It's God himself, the creator. And what's in the mind of the spirit? Well, it's his spirit. He knows what's in our spirit as well. And so therefore, the Lord has a a plan, 
certain objective in mind that he's going to bring this bride of the Lord Jesus Christ to a completed end. It's not going to go on forever and ever and ever and ever. Somewhere we're going to have to come to a completion one day because one day Jesus is going to peel that seventh seal. And it, it beholds, behooves us to be ready when he does come and he peels that seventh seal. But as we read here, he says in verse 28, For we know all things works together for good to them that love God, and to them that are called according to his purpose. First of all, there has to be that love of God. And like we expressed last week, what is the love of God? Oh, Lord, I love you so much, I just like to put my arms around you. That's wonderful. Well, the love of God is in related to his word. If you love me, keep my words and keep my commandments. And if we love God, we will walk in what he has given us for the moment. If we're a child of God, whatever he's given you as a child, we are to love him. because He loves us because of the word that you're carrying and he sees that you are caring for his thoughts. And as you're walking along, then the Lord sees that love that's in you that loves him. And not on the human carnal aspect. The carnal human aspect, yes, plays a certain part to the extent you want to reach out for God. But then he tells us, if you want to know how to love me, don't just do it with your human heart. If you love me, keep my commandments. Because in keeping his commandments, there is no growth aside of his word and his revelated word. If we want to grow, we grow according to his revelated word. Not according to our ideas and thinkings and taking certain pet scriptures. But if we're going to grow, we're going to grow because of revelation. Now, that sounds like a big word and sounds like it, it's so complex. It's not complex. What is a revelation? It's something God has revealed to you or me personally. And if he's revealed something personally to you and me, then that's what part he's looking at. And like we have on the, oh yeah, it's up there today. Sometimes I forget to turn it on. As a young child, the Lord gives, yes, as a child, we may not know a whole lot of things. And surely in the hour that we live in, the bride as a whole is no longer a child. But there could still be young people God can bring in. And although we look at it being a short time, God can do a quick work. But then what is the work that he wants to do? Because God has a goal in mind for us to come into something. And so therefore, we know that all things work together to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose not our purpose not our ways but we have to see his way and how do we know his way if you and I are born again of the spirit of God we have to rely on that spirit that leads us and not on flesh it's fine God uses the ministry but the end result is it's that Holy Spirit that's more important that is revealing to you or me than a speaker that may speak in front of you because after all, the speaker in front of you can't answer for you when it comes for Judgment Day. But that Holy Spirit that's inside of us, he's the one that's going to be doing, doing it. Now, the verse I want to get to is this part here. For whom he did foreknow, there's predestination. He knew you before the foundation of the world. And how that what you and I cannot fathom beyond that the world's been created. We have a certain understanding of what's created some 15 billion years ago. 
But God lives in eternity past. How long is that and how great is he? Uh, yesterday, I have, uh, Friday, I had an email from the brother from the Netherlands. And he gave me a link concerning about creation and the universe and how that the scientific community has always been saying they don't believe in a God, they believe it has to be scientifically proven. Well, now with their best telescope, that they can peer into the darkest distant space, they realize, and all those some were, if you want to, agnostics or, or just didn't believe in God, now the evidence is coming back, according to what was being shown in this video, how that there's proof showing there had to be a creator. That's, that this here didn't happen out of nothing. Not only that, he says, it's so created, so designed perfectly. If the Big Bang, the spreading out of the galaxies and the stars, we're out by 1%, there would be no human life. If it expanded less than 1%, there still would be no human life. These are the scientists from a scientific point of view are saying, it is that fine, fine that the chances of life and this happening, it, it, it's, a, it's one in a trillion trillion. <laughs> so it's they have to now acknowledge, although they may not be believing in God in, in what, the way we do, but now they're believing that, yes, there's had to be a master, somebody that created this. Also, at the same time, they looked at the, the genetic code of, of, of that make up the man. And it, too, the code is it's so complex that in order to understand it, it takes also a trillion if you want to, uh, looking at the different makeup of the genetic, line, genetic code that's there, that even if a little bit was out of whack, there would be no life either. So from the standpoint of, man, of how man's created, what he sees in the genetic realm, and what he sees in the, in the realms of, of how the world was created, the scientific community more and more are now starting to see there had to be a creator because the, their mathematical calculation and the quantum physics that they use all boils down, it's so finite that if it's tipped one way or the other, we wouldn't exist. If the, if the universe was expanding less than just 1%, it would have come back and exploded itself again like a, like a, like a star is being made after a star's made the, all the material comes back because gravity pulls it back together. If it got too far, it would spread away and no way that life could be formed anyway besides that. So I found it kind of, now, it's, if you don't, haven't been to, to physics 101 or geology 101, this might not mean much to you, but the end result is even the hardcore scientists, I have to admit now, there's just no way, the, the, the probability that this all happened by chance is impossible. So I, it was good, so praise the Lord, I thank, I thank the brother for that. So. so there's things that are out there as we're moving on in time. The evidence of God is there. But now, getting back to the subject I'm looking at this morning. For whom he did foreknow, he did predestinate to be conformed, and here's the key, to the image of his Son, Now, when you look at the image, what is that word image means? The way he looked, the stature that he was, from the natural standpoint, is the image that was in the sun. He is an image of his heavenly father. But when he was created, of all the, of the image that he was. All the potential characteristics are there. That's why Jesus was not born God. 
But that image, really what it boils down to is the soul. And so the soul of the only begotten son had to be tested. I mean, look at, at, look at, at the, the Gospels. Talking about testing of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the image part is the soul that it is not from an earthly, carnal, bodily perspective, but it is from the spiritual side of things, of the soul that is to be like Jesus, which is, to, is like God. So therefore, if we are going to grow into his image, and sometimes in days gone by, the scope was so minimal that the image was, well, I want to be like Jesus so I don't sin and the blood covers me and so forth. That is not the only image. Because I want to look at something else here this morning. Because if you can't see what the image implies to that you're growing to, then how can you know you're growing into it? If you don't know the name of the highway where you're going, it's supposed to go, how do you know you can, you can get there? It's basically the same. So therefore, when we're talking about the image of Christ, it's those qualities of the, the spirit that was given to him, and those images are part of the soul, and those functions of the soul is what has to be made to grow. And although the soul is made up of different parts, uh, when I say different parts, spiritually speaking, well, well, if you want to look at what the soul is contained to, let's go to uh, First Peter, Second Peter, sorry. Now we're going to be take partakers of that divine nature. That divine nature is not just in the intellect, it's the soul. And the nature is the nature of the spirit, but it resides in the soul. Without the soul, the spirit can't function. We need spirit and soul working together. The spirit side is the intellect. It's what receives the knowledge and the understanding. The soul is what those qualities that's in you or me or, or a child of God that now needs to be grown up into. All right? So as we look here, it says, Whereby is given us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that's in the world through us. Now here he goes on describing this divine nature. Because Jesus had that divine nature. And besides giving all diligence, add to your faith. Add to your faith. Is this only add to your faith that I believe in the blood of Jesus Christ, that he died for me on Calvary? What is faith? Faith is a revelation, something God has revealed to you and me. It doesn't only pertain to the principal doctrines of Jesus Christ. It does not only pertain to the apostle doctrines, but it, it, it belongs to every part of the word of God because faith is something that God gives. He's not just giving you basic salvation or put you under tutorship, but he wants to perfect you as well. So when we talk about faith, it takes on the whole realm from A to Z concerning, let's say, the bride coming from God picking her up and her coming her to her perfection. So faith is part of that image or the nature of that image that is in Jesus Christ. And if you look at the denominational world, they say, well, that, that's faith. Just faith, believing in God that he can do this for you and, and believe in miracles, faith for miracles. That's so minimal. 
They only look at it in the realm of basic salvation or how to walk with God, but they never see it for the growth. That's why they remain as babes and very few may be under some tutorship. All right? Virtue, that's strength. How do you gain strength? Each one of these characteristics, it says, there's another scripture that talks about, after you have suffered a while, he makes you perfect in the level that you receive of that word concerning whether it is faith, virtue, temperance, long-suffering, and so forth. And how can I grow in virtue, temperance, long-suffering, except that keeps growing all along? Even in this hour, even by God bringing forth fresh divine meat in the hour that we live in. That's all part of our growth. Not just, it seems like in the world today, we got to get ready for the bride. And they're looking just at the aspect of their personal walk. Your growth will stop at that point. If we don't, if the bride has not gone on further from 2004, then how in the world would she ever reach her completion? It's not perfecting a perfection as goody two shoes, that you're so holy you're not making a mistake, but perfection involves the whole plan of God because He just doesn't want you to, to be a, a so a perfect saint that you're not making any mistakes. He wants a bride that knows his word and what he has his plan for until we come to the place that he's going to complete us. Praise the Lord. So now therefore, I'm going to put on No, you haven't seen this one before. Your spiritual growth is directly proportional to your revelatory growth. Why does the, how come the Anglican only play around with the basic doctrines of Jesus Christ? But they claim they want to grow closer to Jesus. But if you don't have the word and the revelation that God wants you to see, there's no way you're going to grow into it. And each revelation, just like your basic revelation, puts the test on that nature of whether it is, well, if you want to look at it, in the, the fruits of it or the nature of it, peace, joy, love, and so forth, or long-suffering, like it says here, faith, virtue, and so forth. These things grow by the word of God that gives you. Then he puts you in a test because not everybody's going to say, oh, what a wonderful thing you're walking into. Most of the time the world will say, you, you st characters, right? You go through a lot of trials and tests. Well, that's the part of the word that starts. But then God doesn't only going to bring you to basic salvation all the time. And so therefore, of these uh, fruits of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is the, what comes off of the Spirit of God when you start believing His Word. The love of God. And how this modern world is so confused, they mix natural love with God's love. Carnal love with God's love. It's not the same. And that's what makes a difference between a believer and a make-believer. A bride and a tear. But this love. Now, I put different colors here and different levels in there. It depends on each one of us in our makeup how we allow the Word of God to make us grow in those nine spiritual gifts or the uh, divine nature that they spoke about in Peter, in Second Peter. So they not, not everybody grows. Everybody got the same bar. It's a steady growth here as we go along because what's in our makeups to us sometimes some aspect, love may be easier. To some others, long-suffering may be easier because of the seed makeup 
that you and I are. But the end result, the scripture declares that he will perfect that which concerns you and me. We have to have confidence in God. If he's called you, he says he's going to make you complete. Now, perfect, that, now, there's another word that's, that's, that's really, if you go out in the charismatic world or the, the evangelical world on TV, they throw that word perfection, they, they got it all over the map. It's how you come complete for the level and the word of God that he gives you, or me. All right? So therefore, that's why I put down in Romans, the, the image of Christ is the object. He wants us to be conformed to that image. But if we don't know what that image is, what that pertains to, it pertains to the soul. Jesus had a soul. How many know that? He was filled with the Spirit without measure when he was baptized by John in the River Jordan. He did not increase in more spirit. He had the fullness. The fullness is full. But his nature, he was tried on everything concerning his image. And what, how was he tried? Just that he would not make a mistake. Yes, this is the part he had to live the word, which you and I have to live the word to be, live righteously and holy before him. But then there's also the part that he was part of his growth, of his nature, of his image, is, Father, I do nothing except what you show me, and it's his word that put the test on Jesus, whether he would believe it or walk in it, which would make these different aspects, how he's confronted by the world, how it made that grow in him. And that's how it grows in you and I. Am I speaking out of my head here this morning? If we, we need to get a glimpse of, say, well, we must come, we want to be in the image of Christ. But if we don't know what it is, you beat before you start. You're just going to be running around in circles in, in the overall scheme of things. Now, <clears throat> I got notes here, but I can't really go by them because things go differently. We're looking at this last generation. Not looking at an individual, but looking at the bride itself. There's, certain, there's three parts that the bride has come through or is going through. Way back in the 1900s, very little of the word of God had been restored. So they're more like, they were like babes, you want to, but not having uh, meat or revelatory revelation of the things of God. First of all, in Azusa Street, most of, most of the majority was all Trinitarian. And by holding on to the Trinitarian revelation or faith, that that hinders your growth for growing into anything further. With him, yes, with your church, fine. But then God brought in the revelation that there's the Godhead to be baptized in his name. And so things were, were growing, the bride as a whole, will start to grow till the time that God brings forth a prophet on the scene. 1948, 47. God start using him bit by bit, starting to restore not just the fundamental doctrines of Jesus Christ, but also the doctrines of the apostles. And by the time you reach 1963, 
the bride had all those doctrines in place. Right? And so therefore, yes, it took a bit of time for from 47 or whatever, so forth, till 1963. All the doctrines of the, the apostle that we are to live by and as God is use, wants us to use it in, in looking in our lives, that was brought till 1963. And it's good to minister to it from time to time and, and to look into it and, and so forth. But here's what I have to say. From 1963 till 2005, you had 41 years that that's been laying in the bride, the doctrines of the apostles. If we didn't get perfected according to those doctrines in 41 years, you don't have another 41 years here till the rapture. You see what I'm look, looking at this morning? So from when those doctrines of the apostle were restored, from 1963 to 2005, what have been preachers been doing? When are those doctrines going to be perfected? Because when we reach 2005, what happened in 2005? Ephesians chapter 4, and if we turn to it, oh, guys, I'll have to go get it. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry singular, it's Jesus' ministry, but there's five offices, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come <clears throat> All come to the unity of the faith. And is there unity in the faith this, this morning? Men has played around, in, even in this message. They're looking at unity in different manners and ways. Till we come into unity of the faith. Now, I believe as far as the basic doctrines of the apostles, they're all believing the same. Well, that's not where the problem lies. And the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. There's the problem. So if this fivefold ministry was to bring this bride to perfection, to completion, You would have thought after 1963 to 2005, with all the, if it's the basic doctrines of the apostles, it would have accomplished it. The bride had it for 41 years. What did we do with it? Where is it? And if it wasn't accomplished in 41 years, by pushing that only, you're not going any further. Because you have stopped at the point of just the doctrines of the apostles. And they're very important. Don't let someone listening say, I think, oh, we don't need that. We need that because you can't go any further unless you have that. And the, the principal doctrines of Jesus Christ. That's why the apostle Paul says in Hebrew chapter 6 verse 1, 
when he met those that weren't going any further, he says, let's, uh, it's good if you want to, I'm putting my own words, it's good for the laying on the hands and the basic baptism in the, and water and so forth, but he says, let us go on to perfection, to completion. And the work of the apostle in an hour, he brought those doctrines of the apostles, which not just Paul alone, but Peter, James, and all those that have, we have in the book of Acts, and the epistles, they are the doctrines which we are built upon. But if that's built upon and that's been established in 1963, and then we've been at it since 41 years, if that's the mean of perfection for me to go in glory, then what stage are you at now? Are you closer than you were from 2005, 1963? So the looking at the perfection, sometimes we lose scope of perfection while not doing anything wrong. That's one thing. The blood of Christ and Jesus, our advocate, is there for you and I. But what God's looking at, he's looking at the image of Christ, not the natural image of carnal man. He's looking at the image of Christ, that we are to grow into the word that brings those divine qualities that is to grow in. And if we're looking at it from the other aspect, you're going to run in circles forever. You'll never do it even another hundred years. If we can't see the picture, you can't get there. If you don't know the road, you ain't going to be there. So now, <clears throat> what is that fivefold ministry main function? Yes, there's five offices. And those five offices are very necessary because if some have not come to the place to understand the picture of what the image they're growing need to grow into, those doctrines of the apostles has to be used. And if there's a new person coming in, he needs the basic doctrines of, the, uh, doctrines of Christ in order to, to come into salvation. But this is the hour that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And there's a negative view in this hour. Who has the word? What is meat that's on ground? And it's not important as long as we look, get close to Jesus. You can get close to Jesus as you want to. You can see the same thing in the evangelical world, in some of the denominational churches like the Pentecostal church. They're not going to get no closer because there is no growth aside from growing in revelation. Because although this testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy in prophetic meat, that meat has the same effect as affecting your love for God. The love of God that God showed to the child of his as he sees that, that God's word was there for his salvation and his growth. And God, it's also his word that is there for our final growth that will work on all those nine spiritual gifts or the divine nature. It doesn't stop with just the doctrines of the apostles. Uh, how can I put this? Maybe. These will always be affected by the word of God, his revealed word, for that growth. That growth of those things are not just limited to the doctrines of the apostles or the basic doctrines of Jesus Christ, the fundamental doctrines. Peace, long-suffering. How do you get peace? Yes, there's peace with God. But there's also peace with God when his word comes in and shows you where you're living at, too. There's peace with God knowing you're on, walking on the right road. Then I hear things like, 
Well, they got a revelation every day. No, we don't. Well, since 2005 till now, what do you have? Anything at all? Why are you so much against it? Is it because maybe of hurt feelings? You're offended by what's being preached? Envy? Jealousy? Could be a number of reasons why someone would make negative comments I want the word of God when it comes down in this, in this hour. I'm speaking to you this morning. I'm speaking for myself too. I took, now it's not, now we can use things that Brother Jackson has said. That's one, that's fine thing. And they're as a reference, but the main thing is the scripture itself. But I found something interesting that he was saying. He's, he was saying here, he's talking about the fivefold ministries. These ministries are for perfecting the word. Perfect, perfecting speak of a work in progress. It is something in action. Something that's going on. Not ha- had been going on. That is going on. Bringing forth something to its final state. As a perfected object, not perfection just of the, your inner man, but perfection for the plan of God that he has for you and I. It is about something that works in harmony for the purpose of bringing something to a perfect end. Is this bride coming to a perfect end with what she received until 2005? No. Otherwise, you might as well broadcast and say, we don't believe in the spirit of prophecy anymore. There's no more prophecies or meat to come forth, or the third pull has stopped. And then when you say things like that, well, what, what is the meat? To begin with, is it more meat on basic salvation? On our growth, how to get closer to God? Sometimes I think they're making, missing the picture as the word of God comes, although it is prophetic, it does have a cause and effect on every one of these nine spiritual gifts. It's the fruit of the Spirit of God, and if the Spirit of God is revelatory in this hour, what is the fruit of it? It affects all these nine parts of it in the proportion that is brought forth. What is long-suffering? You can look at faith. You had faith for basic salvation. We had faith for the doctrines of the apostles. But what about the faith of the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy, in this hour? I listened to a sermon of Brother Mims. He's close. I never heard him preach that way before. And God willing, I think maybe... We'll ask him to come down. When people say, oh, he brought wonderful things. Yes, he can bring wonderful things. But it may be reaffirming or confirming your growth of the apostles of the, of the, the doctrines of the apostles. But how much more wonderful is it that he makes you, that the Lord makes you grow? Jesus one day was talking to the scribes and the Pharisees. He says, you hypocrites. You can discern the face of the sky, 
and of the earth. But how is it you can't discern the times? Discern this time. Why couldn't they discern it? And how true that's been in every move of God. When God brings a servant on the ground and brings out a certain amount of people, but then it's sad to say they're leaning. I'll say, we're not leaning on flesh or man. Yes, but somehow it has dimmed your light that you can't see the next stage. Tell me it's not so. So if they can see their out, the, the day they're living in, but they can't determine what is going on in their time. It's just like the Branham movement. Now, I keep, now if someone's in the Branham movement, I'm not picking on the individual per se. But they sit in Moses' seat. They say, Brother Branham, we've got to check it with Brother Branham. And if Brother Branham didn't say it, then it can't be so. Because they have the confidence. Yes, God showed them something to some, to some extent. But they lost sight somewhere of seeing that once God takes that servant on, that God's now moving in a, another realm. He has moved on. And we can't, hindsight is twenty twenty, but it seems there's more people has hindsight than has any foresight. The, the hour that we live in. Now in Luke 8 and 18, I don't know if I have it here. All right. Take heed, therefore, how ye hear. And if I'm hearing by just leaning only on what God done in the past, and that's wonderful too, it has to go in hand in hand with what God has given in the past. I'm not speaking anything against that in any shape, way, or form. But if I'm limited just to that, I can't see what God's doing in my day, then there's something wrong. The warning bell should go on. And here's what will happen to a people that just looks there and can't see their day, as it says in Luke, take heed, therefore, how you hear. The past is 2020. Things are confirmed. Yes, we know Brother Brandon was an apostle. We know Brother Jackson was an apostle. But what could you see in your day? Take heed, therefore, how you hear, for whatsoever... Whosoever hath, in other words, has been given, and it was given by the Lord, to him shall be given, and whatsoever has not, to him shall be taken away, which he seems to have. So, to him that is truly given, how did he get it? That Holy Spirit that's in him received it while he was being fed under tutorship, more likely. But then when you step, for, step forward from there, then that same Holy Spirit should, will also make that believer see the hour that he's moved into and not just dwelling back here. Now, I'm not saying everything has to be over there. But somewhere if the bride never goes over there, you aren't going to be there. And so therefore, if he's given you and I under tutorship, he says more shall be given. There's going to be an increase. And when we looked into how in Luke chapter 19, in that 19th chapter, it's referring to an end time setting concerning rewards. When you look at Matthew chapter 25, verse 13 on, that's 
speaking about the early church. Because one dealt with talents, the other dealt with pounds. But talents or pound is both revelation. And to him that was given. To him that was given. One pound. Where the, that was given to him. He didn't have to go through knocks and bangs. He was just in a place that God was teaching him and tutoring that, that bride element, that person there. And he was given free of charge the revelation because God put him in a, a surrounding which could, he was more or less covered and protected to receive that truth. So God made sure that it was given. And in where that was given, there was a mixture of those that would receive and know the truth and those that received but didn't know the truth. And that will play out when it goes into its stage of growth next to the next stage over here. And so if the parable is Luke 19, because it shows Luke chapter 19, that parable goes till the opening of that seventh seal. All right, I can use this. Here. You and I are here in 2005. We're in that third watch. We're in the time of the fivefold ministry. Luke chapter 19 spans this last generation. Because when the Lord does come in verse 15, having received the kingdom, as, as we, God has opened up those scriptures, having received the kingdom, then he's come down here and he's, what he's bringing these servants before him are the earth living servants. And when he's down here, that seventh seal is broke. He's not coming down here to judge servants while that seventh seal is still intact. First of all, as you, the sequence of events, when that seventh seal is broke, yes, that angel is sent to the earth, but before he comes in heaven, there's played out that the, everyone in heaven, in Revelation 5 and 12 says, you are worthy concerning the literal Lord Jesus Christ to receive power, honor, glory, wisdom. He having received the authority for the kingdom. Then when you bring it to Luke, it says when he's down here, he had received the authority for that kingdom. And now while he's down here, he's judging servants that are alive. That's your quick but we never looked at that before, I don't know. It's time you look at it. Because according to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, he's going to judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. So he's judging, he's bringing these servants before him, and he's asking here at the end, right here, when that seven seals broke, so leading up to that time where this servant was protected and had, was given something. Because God was going to use him for a ministry, or a believer, if you want to. As he's been given something, then when he has to go forward, then he says, Lord, that pound that you gave me, why does it make the distinction between the pound you gave me and how he increased? While under tutorship, it was easy to entreat and to believe. But every time God sends forth either ser servants or servants, a servant or servants, when they have to walk in the field, now he's under the gun for the revelation that he's bringing forth. And so this servant says, Lord, your ta one talent has now increased to ten. That's for this hour. I'd have to throw back to those that are saying we've got a revelation every day. Where's your increase? If 
the Lord has given us, or who, to whomever, one talent. And it takes a process of time that he has, goes forth. That increased ten. It's not here he's received one, next week he's got ten. No, it don't work that way. It didn't work that way in the life of Brother Jackson either. So there was truth, fresh meat that God was bringing forth. So there, was, there has to be an increase. And that increase is just as important for the perfecting of the bride coming to her completion as it is to play around with basic salvation and the doctrines of the apostles. Because in order for you and I to be made complete, we need what's in this hour. Sometimes some preachers don't like the way you preach. That's what they did to Brother Jackson. Those that came out from his hour. Brother Brown was the same way. The denominational preachers treated it the same way. Why should it be different now? And it's those of his own ranks that's doing it. Not the church world. Not the sinner from the street. If every minister was just, well, we can't go any further, we dare not to go any further to bring another revelation because I might be wrong. Well, you may be wrong if it's not your ministry. But it was never to go forth, then there's no way this bride will go to perfection. We had the basic doctrines of the apostles from 1963 to 2005 Surely that should have been perfected somehow. Or brought to the light where it is to accomplish its purpose. And if it didn't happen in 41 years, what do you think is going to happen in the next 10 or 15 years? I don't know how long till the time of the seventh seal is. We have a better idea when that seventh seal is coming. How beautiful was that revelation of Acts chapter 1 verse 7. It's not, he was talking to his disciples way back in 33 AD. It's not for you to know the time of the season. That means the centuries and the decades. But how beautiful. It was just a simple revelation. It just, the, anoint, the Spirit of God just had to open that up a little bit. Because we realized that centuries was over in, when Israel became a nation. Because Jesus said that generation shall not pass away. Well, that generation is not 100 years. So therefore, centuries has stopped. You are now in seasons or decades. And I don't want to preach that sermon again. It's on, it's on the internet. Why is there resistance? There's got to be a different spirit. If simple people that I see see it readily, Shouldn't those that be seasoned ought to be able to see it? This is the hour. This is the day. This is all coming down to a showdown. You can preach your head off if you want to, trying to get people to see. But if they don't have eyes to see, then they're going to stay where they are. And no amount of dynamite or probing or, or, or whatever will change their mind except God deals with it. But when God starts to move in a miraculous way, when that miracle war about that time takes place, I believe we'll have the, some of the same action in the early days of the book of Acts. The Spirit of God will pinpoint who's bride and who's not. Because we're not going into that half hour silence with a whole bunch of different ideas how this bride is going to be perfected. And perfection doesn't lie in just the doctrines of the apostles. Because all the growth Our spiritual growth is directly proportional to the revelation 
of God's Word. That's why if I just have basic salvation, I know I'm repeating again, I can't grow any further than the revelation that I have at that hour. And that affects those nine spiritual, the fruits of the spirits, or the nature that is in Peter. The doctrines of the apostles, as we move on into that, that too now, because of the revelated word of God, it has effect on each one of those properties of the spirit, of your nature, and the image of Christ as we're growing. To me, the picture is getting clearer. That's what we need to work on here by the revelated word of God. And Jesus was made perfect by the things he suffered. He didn't have to suffer basic salvation. He suffered about every word that the Father gave him of things he needed to speak. And that was not only concerning what the apostle was going to be teaching or the things that he brought to a certain point, but it was boiled down on the word of God that he was bringing forth that would show things as well that he was tested on. Why do you think he abraded those scribes and Pharisees? You can discern the skies and the times, but the, the signs of the skies, but you can't discern your own time. Why did he say that to them? Because they were against him preaching what he was preaching of the word of God that the Father was giving him. And so he was being tested, and that was molding his image that was in him, that is like the image of God, although he was born without sin, that image needed to be to grow and to be tested. To be in full, he was tested in every point, in every way. He was not tested on our sinful nature. He didn't have one. You and I have a handicap. But we have a promise. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you and me from all sins of unbelief. How more perfect can you get? Is there a better blood? Is there a better covenant? And we have an advocate if we do something wrong. That's, the, that's how the Lord looks at us through that blood. He sees us clean all through our walk. But the growth of that image is not just that part there. There's the part of every revelated word of God that's going to now bring pressure to bear on these nine aspects. Okay, I better stop because I'm going to get long-winded again. But seeing takes half of the battle. If, if I don't know what I need to grow into and how I'm growing then how are you going to know that you're growing? Steadfastness. Oh, the Lord gave me a word. I'm steadfast on that. Yeah, it may start there, but there's going to be a long road of testing that and growing into it. And by every revelation, that will start to grow more and more. Well, I've said what I. But he, in Matthew chapter 13, verse 23, Ray gets in, Brother Ray gets into this more often. He says, But he that receives seed on good ground, that's the bride, is he that hears the word, not with your physical ear, but the ear of the Holy Ghost, and understands it. If you understand it, you're going to know you have to grow which bears fruit that brings forth some hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. But it's all of the same revelation. Maybe not knowing the depth like someone else of that same revelation, but it's the same picture, whatever revelation you want to look at here this morning. So praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but it seems... There's some more. God is bringing this bride as she comes into further light and understanding. There's an assurity at the time you're living in. 
where we're going and how close we're getting to leaving this whole earth one day. We're not going to leave without having, first of all, that archangel coming down. And it is an angel, it's not Jesus Christ. It's that angel that projects Christ. And when he sounds his voice, now we hear the word, oh yeah, he sounds his voice, and the seven thunders are their voice. Oh yeah, those seven thunders. But his voice has something to say. I'll just leave that there this morning. Because if those seven thunders have voices to say something and mean something, that voice of the archangel also wants to say something and mean something. Yet it's, it is the means to trigger the, the seven thunders to say their voices, but it can't be just, hey, I'm here, seven thunders, now go for it. There's more to it than that. Well, praise the Lord. Are you happy? Are you content? Are you at peace? Are you being fed? Jesus told Peter, feed my sheep. He didn't say, Peter, feed the same things to my sheep all the time. That was not implied. What, how did Peter feed the sheep? The things he spoke. And Peter brought some things forth. That we have these epistles, praise the Lord. He didn't become repeat everything Jesus was saying. But God showed him something. So, whatever we are in the bride, we can't toot no horn. It's because Jesus, the Lord, has seen what the potential you and I are. And it's his choice, not our choice. If he didn't like a certain one, he would have removed it. But I'm thankful he... Sometimes we, we think in ourselves, well, why, why me? Well, ask the Lord, why you? Because there's maybe no one else in the things that you and I do. Don't ask me to play the piano. I'll be out of my place. You won't have any harmony there. You might have a lot of noise, but no harmony. So we all have gifts differing. We all have a part to play, assembling ourselves together. The growing is not just in hearing fresh meat, but it's also how to react with one another in assembly. And I'm starting to ramble on again. Lord, forgive. All right, Heavenly, let's just stand this time. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that you had let our eyes to see, Lord, the picture that you have in your word as much as we can see it for the hour that we live in. Now I commit your, this service in your hands. In that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Can you see it? Have a musician in case someone has a need before we dismiss? So praise the Lord.
stand at this time and ask Brother Marco to dismiss us in a word of prayer this morning. each one.